Hello, my name is Carl Lloyd Hauser. I am the senior pastor of Grace Community Church, and I am so excited that you are with us on this podcast. We also want you to get connected in a church family. If you don't have a local church, check us out at gracemontrose.org. We want to make sure that you have an opportunity to grow and connect with God. But we pray that these next 25, 30 minutes that you spend with us are powerful, that God meets you and speaks to you because He loves you so much. All right, so we're in a series right now called Go, and uh, it culminates with Serve the City. So just remember, we're not going to have church that weekend, and uh, if you haven't yet, please sign up for a project. We're not going to have Saturday night or Sunday. We're going to go out and be the church. And also, uh, the prayer vigil, I think that there's someone praying for 24 hours straight except 3 in the morning. Nobody wants that one. So it's still open. Now, I did that one last time, and it wasn't my favorite, so I'm hoping somebody else does, but we'll make sure that it's covered. But if you have or moved it all to do three in the morning. I think that's the only one. There's a lot of different uh, sections, though. Uh, We want to have about three, four people praying uh, at every hour for 24 hours uh, for this. This is a big deal for uh, the community, for our church. It's a really uh, huge chance to see God move and to reach the lost. So uh, my sermon uh, this uh, weekend here, I've got one clip that pretty much preaches the whole thing. If you just kind of remember this clip, you'll you'll remember it. You'll know what to do. Um, And I have to apologize apologize in advance because it's Monty Python and you just have to know like uh, when I was in high school like we didn't even me and my friends we didn't even speak English we just quoted Monty Python to each other at all times and you know it's run away and I'll bite your legs off and we just I mean I I could just sit with you for hours and just say Monty Python line so anyway uh, we got this little line uh, little clip here we're going to see two things you're going to see runners with no sense of direction and swimmers who don't know how to swim so let's go ahead and show that competitors from over four million different countries. And uh, here we are at the start of the first event of the afternoon, the second semi-final of the 100 yards for people with no sense of direction. Uh, I'll just give you the competitors. Lane 1, Skolomowski of Poland. Lane 2, Zanapatik of France. Lane 3, Grobovich of the United States. Next to him, Drabble of Trinidad. Next to him, Fernandez of Spain. And in the outside lane, Orman of Brazil. is here at the Brundus Absurd Pool just in time to see the start of the 200 metres freestyle for non-swimmers. Watch for the tough Australian champion Ron Burnett in the second lane. So, of course, it was a lot funnier when I was in high school, but, you know, uh, that first one is a, a perfect picture of what, what's going It's a perfect picture of what's going on in the world today. And as the people are running so hard, running so fast, but where are you going? What are you chasing after? What's the goal and what's the end? Now, I don't know if uh, John Cleese and Monty Python and the gang, if they uh, read uh, Corinthians, I, I'm not sure, but Paul came up with this idea Runners with no sense of direction, way before Monty Python did. And it's 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Now, we're going to spend most of the morning in 1 Corinthians 9. We're going to look at the context of this whole thing and dig in here. But we're going to start with verse 26. And Paul says, therefore, here we go, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. Have you ever stopped to ask, like, what am I doing? It's a dangerously powerful question. You know the worst time to do it is when you're exercising? I, was, uh, I trained for uh, the Sneffels Half Marathon. I was getting ready for that uh, with my daughter. And um, I, I like to run about four or five miles. But once I get over seven miles, I start hating it. And my knees start to hurt. And my left foot always falls asleep. And it's like I kind of clomp, you know, clomp, run, clomp, run. And, and I was out there, you know, about nine, ten miles. And I was just like, what am I doing? It's not a good question to ask while you're running. And actually, uh, when the, I was all ready to go, and I actually got COVID right before the marathon, so I wasn't able to, uh, to run it. But uh, Maddie, she said, okay, well, let's get ready for the next one. I was like, no, I hate that. I'm not doing it ever again. I'm going to run my four little miles, and you can come pick me up wherever I am at that place. That's as far as I go. But have you ever asked, like, what am I doing? I mean, that could radically alter your life, Rad- radically alter what you're doing, giving your heart to. So let's look at a little more context here. So let's go up a couple verses from where we were in verse 24, in chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians. And it, Paul says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? 
run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body. I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. Now, we know that Paul had incredible discipline and he had an amazing focus. And we know of certainly three missionary journeys that he goes on to. Probably four are alluded to in scripture. And most likely, there was more than that. But I found this guy who uh, did the math and he put it all together and, and he estimates that Paul, just traveling time for all these different missionaries, that journeys, that he would travel for two years. There was a total of two years of traveling in his life. And that he probably traveled over 25,000 miles. 10,000 of those miles he walked. That's like walking from LA to New York four times. So where was he going? What was he running after? What was he chasing? Well, we see actually at the end of his life, uh, towards the end of his life, he talks about it. So let's go over to Timothy for just a minute. We'll come back to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9 there. But let's go to Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, verse 6. And now he's just about, he knows that he's about to die. And he's actually uh, going to be executed by the emperor, by Nero here pretty soon. And it says in verse 6, as that's coming of chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And here's really good news for you and me. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So the end is the crown. And so at that time, when uh, Paul was writing in Corinth, they had the Isthmian Games. And and they had the Olympic Games, actually, at that time, too. And so there were all these contests that had wrestling and running that were involved. And think about how, even now, like the athletes, these Olympic athletes, how they eat and they sleep and everything they do, they just train and train and train for like nine seconds of competing. And they give their whole lives to this. And Paul, back then they had uh, crowns uh, that they would win, uh, actually made of celery and also of uh, pine leaves. And Paul, he's running for a whole different crown. He's running for this eternal crown that with this minute where he's going to face Jesus, just face to face. And his whole life is about this moment. And so the question comes to us, are you running toward heaven with all you have, or are you just kind of hanging out here on earth? But Paul was a man on mission. And so I want to challenge you this morning to ask, okay, well, what am I doing here? Are you a man? Are you a woman on mission? And if you don't know what your mission is, how are you going to get there? You're like people running a race with no sense of direction. We're all just running. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm running as hard as I can. And we got to figure out where's God taking me and where am I going to go? You know what one of the problems with the American mindset is? is that we always start with the question, what? I mean, with the que- we always ask a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? What's the first thing you ask another person when you meet them? What do you do? I have a friend from Argentina. He says, you Americans are weird. We never ask that question. He says, we never ask, what do you do? He says, the first question always is, tell me about your family. First question is, tell me who you are. I don't really care about what you do. That's, that's just like, that doesn't even matter. And so I want you to understand something here. Listen, your career is not your mission. Do you understand that? That your job is not your purpose? That's an American lie. What am I going to do? What am I going to be? No, who are you? Why are you here? That's the question. Okay, so imagine like uh, most little boys, many, many, many little girls, I want to be a police officer when I grow up, right? Let me explain something. That's not a purpose. It's a position. Because if it was, once you went through the academy, once you got the job, you'd be like, okay, I'm done. That was the purpose. Now it's over, right? See, the career is just the what. It's the place that you can express your purpose. It's the place where you can express your mission. I'm an editor. I'm a pastor. I'm an electrician. I'm a general contractor. I'm a real estate agent. Okay, but what's your purpose? Why? What's your mission there? And here's the thing, mission always starts with why. 
Why am I there? So let's grab a little more context. So let's go up to verse 22 now. We're just going to kind of do this whole chapter or much of this chapter backwards. And so verse 22, he says in chapter 9, to the weak, I became weak. To win the weak. I love that. I become all things to all men so that by all possible means I might save some. One of the things that we say around here is we'll do anything short of sin to lead people to Jesus. And I think Paul has a similar mentality. And he says, I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Why? What's his why? So that I might save some. See, your mission starts with why. You have to have a why. And here's the thing, is if you have the why, the what becomes so, the where, they also become so less important. Why do you want to be a police officer? Well, I, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want to protect the innocent. I want to fight injustice. I love adrenaline. Okay? Fine. But if you know that why, there's all sorts of what's. You want to protect the innocent? You know what? Life Choices is a great place where you could go protect the innocent. All sorts of innocent that need to be protected. You, you want to fight injustice? Child protection, that's a great place you could fight injustice. You're into adrenaline? Well, go skydiving. I mean, there's all sorts of what's. There's all sorts of different places to find your why. But you have to know your why, and the what becomes, it doesn't even really matter. And here's my big point. The big thing I want you to get right now is that no matter what you are doing, whatever you do, wherever you do it, there is mission there. If you're the guy who, like on towns, and there's so many of them right now, who hold the sign for all the construction that just seems to keep happening there, and if you're the guy who holds the sign, why? There's a why there. If you're working the airport, there's a why there. If you're an accountant, why? We need to start asking God, why? This is where I am. Why? Why am I here, God? Come before Him. Why are you in construction? Why are you in real estate? Why are you developing software? And here's the bigger question. Why are you at that job with those people at this time? Not just like, why am I, am I doing this? But Lord, why am I right here? My uh, daughter, uh, Joy, she right now, her what is uh, she's cleaning teeth, right? She works at a dentist's office. And she was telling me that, she says, okay, this is what I've decided, is that every patient who comes, I'm going to do one of a, a few things. First of all, if I can minister truth to them right there, I'm going to do it. And then if I could connect with them, then, then I'm going to find a way to connect with them. And then every single person, uh, if, if I can't do any of that, and even if I do that, I'm going to pray for them. So if you get your teeth cleaned by joy, you can know that she is praying for you as she's cleaning your teeth. That's a Why? Why are you there? You there to make money? There to gain skills? Or are you there to minister the kingdom of God? Are you there to bring truth and life and freedom? Bring hope in the middle of the situation? So here's my challenge to you. I don't know, many of you are going to start work on Monday morning, but whenever work comes next, or school or whatever you do regularly, wherever you go next, before you do it, as you put the key in the car or you get on your bike or however you get there, as you start, I just want you to ask this. I want you to say, Holy Spirit, why am I here today? Just ask him. I'm heading there. Why am I going there? In fact, I'd like, let's just, let's just do it right now. Let's just take a minute. We're going to ask. So you just, just take a minute and get quiet before God. Let's ask God to show you why. So Holy Spirit, we have all sorts of different jobs, all sorts of different duties, all sorts of different what's that are here. And I ask Holy Spirit that you would come right now, that you would speak to every single one of us. Holy Spirit, would you please tell us, why are we there? Why are we there, God? Just show us. Just give us a word, give us a picture, give us an idea. Thank you, Lord. Now, many, many of you, he's already spoken to you. You already know your why. But listen, just keep seeking, keep asking. And many of you are going to get it. When, right when you put your key in the car, he's going to show you why. Now, we're about to do this uh, music by the river. And we're not doing it just because we like music. And we're not doing it just because we like to be by the river. We have a why behind it. And part of the why is you. And, and what we're hoping is that the people will come and they'll connect with you. And then you'll help them take a step, just one little step closer to Jesus. 
And I'm going to share the gospel that evening, and and we're going to give praises in the middle of the park. And, you know, there's spiritual warfare. There's all sorts of different things. But you are the why. And I just wanted to give a quick promo uh, for that, just so you could kind of see what it's about. And I want to ask you to come and be part of that. Mostly, yeah, I want you to have fun. I want you to relax. But mostly to be the why, to connect with the other people who come. Go ahead and show that, please. Come and join us and come be part of the why, because I want you to understand that no matter what you're doing, wherever you go, there's a why. And it's not just work, but it's also your family. Like, why are you with those crazy people? Why am I here, God, in the midst of these crazy people? Why am I here in this neighborhood? Why am I there with my friends? I've got a buddy who has like a million buddies. And every time that he invites me to something, there's like 20 guys there. I'm like, why am I here? There's always a why. Why am I here, Lord? What do you want to do? There's got to be a reason. So for my family, the why that I'm there, I am there to create a safe, connected, Jesus-centered home where people can reach their potential. Have you ever thought about it? See, I've thought about it. I'm not saying I'm doing it right. I'm, I don't, I'm not necessarily doing it perfect, but that's why I'm there. Do you have a why for your family? Anybody have a personal mission statement? I'd I'd encourage you to come up with a personal mission statement. I've had one for 25 years. It's the same one. To bring light and life through the local church. My God, why am I here? And as I sought him, as I tried to work it out, I was like, yeah, bring light, bring life. And I knew even before I was working in a church that it was through the local church that I would bring it. If you don't know, just ask, Holy Spirit, why? Why am I here? Because there's deep mission, there's deep purpose wherever you are. There's a secular author by the name of Simon Sinek, and he has a book called Find Your Why. It's actually a pretty good book if you wanted to kind of go through a process to help you find your why. Now understand, it's a secular guy, so you're going to have to remember what the real purpose is. But he's got a a, a TED uh, talk that is actually the most popular TED talk of all time. And it's uh, talking about starting with why. You have to find a why. But one of the things that he says I think it's pretty good. He says, uh, Martin Luther King didn't say, I have a plan. He said, I have a dream. I have a mission. I have a purpose. I have a reason here. What's your mission? What's your dream? What's your purpose? And then Simon Sinek, he says, this is how you can tell if you have found your why. If you're willing to tattoo it on your body, you probably have it. You probably have the right language for it. Now, uh, we've got a mission here that I believe in with all my heart. Love God and love others. And I'm not going to tattoo it on my body because my skin is getting to the point now at my age where in just a few years it'll say like love goo and like live odors or something like that. And I, and I don't want that. You know, I don't, I don't want that on my arms, but I will put it on my wall. Do you know your why? All right, so you first you start with why. And then the second question is Who? Who am I affecting today? Who am I reaching right now? So let's go back to Paul here, get a little more context and pick up in 19. And he says, though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone. Boy, I mean, how many of us are willing to do that? Do you hear what he's saying? I will lay down my rights for everyone, for anyone. I'll let go of what I deserve to win as many as possible because that's what I care about. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. 
To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. You know what I love about that? It's like, you know, there's so many things, Christians, that we fight over. And listen, doctrine's important. But there's, you know, the, the, no, this is how we baptize, and this is how we do this, and, the, you know, and we, we make, draw all these lines. But a person on mission is just like, you know what, I don't even care, because i got to reach people for Jesus. I don't have time for that stuff. And yeah, sure, figure it out and, and, and seek it out, but man, I've got much bigger fish to fry, and I care about much bigger things, and I think Paul did too. And then what we read before, the weak I become weak. To win the weak I become all things to all men so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this all for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessing. Wow. Who? Well, the why is that I might save some. The who? As many as possible. Whoever I can reach. Whoever I can touch. I mean, I'm going to go after him. I'll do whatever it takes. And this actually, this is a daily question here. Every day. So, so let's say, okay, my why, my, I'm here to bring hope. God just, I'm here to bring hope. And, and then let's say you're where? So let's say that you work in a complaints department. Or maybe at the returns department. Okay, then the next question is who? What an amazing thing that you get to bring hope to people who are frustrated. People who can't make it work, Right? People who are mad, right? I mean, what an amazing, fruitful field you get to work in. If your job is hope, can you think of a better place to bring it than a complaints department? Who needs it more, right? Frustrated people, and I get to bring hope to them. That's my job. I want to think about this. Have you ever considered that the people that you dread most does that person, that boss, so that you're like, oh, no, they're here. Or that client, you know, you see them coming in the door, you're just like, mm. Have you ever considered that the people you dread most are the very people you are on mission to reach? Have you ever thought that maybe that one who drives you the most crazy is actually the reason that you're there? Can God do that? The ones in your family who you just, you just can't stand at the family room, have you ever thought that that's the mission? You ever thought that that's the reason? Fathers of Jesus, it's time for us to focus on mission, to get back on mission, to make this a daily prayer. God, who am I bringing hope to today? So first the why, then the who, and then the what and the where. So a little more context, then let's jump up a few verses then to, to 16. And he says, yet when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast for I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? That reward, Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge and so not make use of my rights in preaching it. What's his what? Preaching. Wherever I go, that's what I'm going to do. So what's my what? My, my what is pastoring, it's fathering, it's husbanding. Maybe yours is selling, or, or maybe yours is building or serving. Maybe it's parenting. That's your what, where you bring your why. But here's the thing. When you know your why, you could endure just about any what. And you could go almost to anywhere. So we'll jump up just a little bit to verse 12 here. This is powerful. Get ready. He says, we didn't use our rights. On the contrary, listen to this. We put up with anything rather than hinder the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would put up with anything. If I'm on assignment, I will put up with anything. Listen, I'm on an assignment right now. And I don't want to leave. I love this assignment. But if God gives me a new assignment, I'm going to go. I will follow him anywhere. I will do whatever he asks me to do, right? Even if he tells me to go to Denver. <laughs> and, and I mean, I'll, it'll be a trail of tears the whole way over and, and brokenness and no, oh, please no, Lord, please no. But I'd even do that. No wonder so many people feel like, oh, there has to be more. Because you thought your purpose was your career. Where'd you ever get that lie? That's just your what, that's just your where. 
you know, it's like if we went over and I, I went over and I had dinner with Ken and I came back and, you know, well, what would you have? I had mustard. Now, I also had bratwurst, you know, and watermelon and all the fixings there. But all I tell you about, I mean, I'm just focusing on this little what. I just, I got some mustard. I got some garnish here. There's so much more to it. What do you want to be when you grow up? That's just the mustard. Who are you going to be? Now, that's the meat. Why are you there? Now, that's some real food. That's sustenance. Who are you going to reach? That matters. I mean, imagine if I told you, well, there's got to be more to eating than just mustard. And if you loved me, you would say, Carl, have you ever tried bacon? <laughs> yeah, there is more, right? And if you, if you say to me, there's got to be more to life than just my work, and I would say, yeah, have you ever tried working on mission? Have you ever thought about why you're at work? And yeah, we, we need to ask, okay, Lord, when will I be done? You know, we train for this, this crown that goes on forever. And we endure. And you know, I think one of my, actually, my generation's failures, I think one of the, the ways that we have failed, I mean, one of the first things is we handed all our kids cell phones way too early. It was way too much freedom. And I, 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 that was part of my fault, Right? But I think another thing my generation did is that we taught our kids that if it's not perfect, quit. If you don't like it, hey, we just want you to be happy. I'm not so sure that's the best lesson to give your kids. I'm not so sure we set them up when you're just like, hey, we just want you to have whatever you want here. And yeah, you know, you can change jobs and you can change your friends and you can change your neighborhood. But what's the point if you don't know why you were there? Will you know why you're going to the next one? And so we need to ask before we leave, is God really releasing me? Or does he want me to hold? Because, you know, we're in a spiritual fight. And spiritual struggles are not easy. And so we fight and we endure and we continue and we persist. And then we see breakthrough. And how tragic. They say, oh, we don't like it. It's uncomfortable. It's not working. I quit. I'm going to go someplace better and maybe you'll find someplace better but you're going to miss the life and the freedom and the breakthrough that God wanted to bring through you there. So we hold on and we go. Here's a question. What would you be willing to sacrifice for the mission? What would you be willing to lay down for the call? I mean, Paul, he, 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 beating after beating, shipwreck, left for dead, stabbed in the back, Consider it, I mean, it's all loss. It's nothing for, compared to Christ. It's all worth it. When you understand that the scope of your call, when you understand the everlasting beauty of this crown that we will receive when we see Jesus face to face, the question is, what wouldn't we be willing to endure? What wouldn't we be willing to sacrifice? What wouldn't we be willing to walk through for the sake of the call that he's put on our lives? Listen, you are called. You are called. He has placed you here at this time with these people in that job, in this ministry, in this church, in that neighborhood. He has placed you there for a reason, for a call. Why? Are you ready? Are you ready to run for the crowd? To live on mission? To find your why? I've just got one last question for you. We'll close. And it's this. Okay. You might be ready, but are you available? So if he comes, he says, okay, I want you to reach out to that person. I want you to care for that person. Are you willing to say yes? Are you willing to say wherever, whenever, however, whatever, Lord? For the sake of the mission, I'll endure anything. Embarrassment, discomfort, bad boss, imperfect working environment. Are you willing to say, God, I'm available. Use me however you want when you do, I want to tell you, listen, he's going to use you powerfully. You're going to be a world changer. You're going to transform that workplace. You're going to transform your family. You're going to transform your neighborhood. If you just say, here I am, Lord, send me. I'm available. I'm going to pray for you right now. So, Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much for my friends here. Lord, I know their hearts are for you. And Lord, we do, we want to do your work. We want to be part of your call. 
And Lord, I ask you just to affirm every call here. And Lord, I think there's a number of people that are just struggling. They're like, ah, oh, it's just not fitting. And I ask Holy Spirit, would you please show them their why just right now? Or wherever that place of struggle is, whether it's home, whether it's work, whether it's just in their own heart, Lord, would you just show them their why? And Lord, I just pray that you would give us power now, that you would give us Holy Spirit power to persist, Holy Spirit power to endure, Holy Spirit power to do your work. Lord, I pray that we would become prayer warriors, we would be kingdom builders, Lord. Wherever we are, Lord, we would just be warriors for what you have, Jesus. And God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I made it about me. It's never about me. Lord, it's about you. And it's about the ones you want to reach. And so, Lord, we say, here we are. Send me. Lord God, we are available for your work and plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us. I hope that God spoke to you. We would love to follow up and care for you any way that we can. So come visit us at gracemontrose.org. Say hello. Let us know what we can do to help you grow in him. God bless you.